And here we are, folks, back at draw seven of the 2024 Newfoundland Men's Curling Championship and the uh, 2024 Scotties Provincial Championship for the ladies. Draw seven. Our feature game today is Ryan McNeil Lambswood versus Dave Thomas from Portabasque. Should be a beauty. I'm in the booth here with our tech support, Emily Neri, and the, our other broadcaster, Glenn Goss. Glenn, what do you think we're going to see here today? Well, it's interesting. Uh, Dave has had a bit of a struggle get, getting some some wins in the column, but Ryan McNeil Lambswood, they're uh, they're tied for first. So this is you can't waste these games. You've got to win this. I expect they'll come out. They'll play. They have been playing strong, but in the first end here, you can see Dave is going to try to muck it up. He's going to try to throw a, a tight guard. Ryan is saying, "No, I'm not playing the game yet. I want my 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 guys to get their draw weight, get their legs under them." And then we'll see where we go from there. But so I expect it, you know, and Dave, even though his record doesn't indicate it, they're a very good team. He's a good player. He can make a lot of rocks that, that some other guys can't. So he could make this interesting. Well, I, I tend to agree with your assessment, Glenn. But in most tournaments I've seen or you've seen, uh, just because a team's record doesn't indicate that they're, they're still in the hunt, um, there's always these teams that ruin, ruin it for the guys at the top of the pack. So uh, I think Ryan's going to have his hands full. He's going to have to be pretty careful here and not let the, the uh, keep the game close and not let it get away early from him. And uh, Dave Thomas's team got no pressure on him. They're going to go out and try to put up a big number and take him down. Agreed, and I, and I agree with what you say. Like uh, some of these guys are at the top of the pack. They won a couple of games where they they either made a good one at the end or the other guy missed one at the end, so they won by one or two points. Dave. He's a one and four record, but I'd say two or three of those games were down to the wire or just happened to either miss one or somebody made a big one on them. So Absolutely. it's a very, very small difference between the teams. Yeah, well, hopefully the fans here today will be entertained by the six sheets we got going on, four men's games and two ladies' games. And uh, curling so far has been pretty high, pretty high level, a lot of great highlight reel shots, and uh, looking for more of the same today. So here we are in the first end there now. Things are pretty wide open. I'm just going to run down the Dave Thomas team. At lead, we have Floyd Francis. Second is Devin Ryan. Third is Mike Mullins and Skip Dave Thomas. And on uh, Ryan Lambswood team, at the lead is Aaron Feltham. Uh, second is an import player from Nova Scotia, Scott Weagle. Uh, third is Daniel Bruce from Conerbrook. And uh, the skip is Ryan McNeil Lambswood. I've been corrected, folks. Folks, it's Graham Weagle is the actual name. I got the Weagle part right anyway. Yeah, there's three Weagles. So. There's three Weagle brothers. Sorry for my confusion. That maybe they all look alike. Pretty conservative start, Mark, to the game, and I can understand Ryan McNeil doing this. He wants to get make sure his team is. I think he knows a bit about about Dave Thomas, how he can play the soft game, and I think Ryan would like to just make sure that his team is prepared before he uh, before he gets into any. Well, I think Ryan would have played Dave before. Both these teams basically are from the west coast of Newfoundland, even though the Lambswood team currently for the last couple of years have been playing out of St. John's where they've all going, uh, attending Memorial University. Um, so uh, with that roll out there, now you're going to see Lambswood uh, peel that guard just to open it up. He'll be happy with a blank here. That's and the objective, I think, right now. Well, the way my senior team plays, the way I play, we play we play this way, and then I plug the last one for one. <laughs> well, the thing about that, the thing about that, and I think my physics is pretty good. That that's what happens when you have two round objects hit square. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and Emily is sitting here now, and she's smiling because she's played with our senior team a few times in the major league, so she knows I'm right. <laughs> Well, Emily, if you play with these guys I all fall, you would know what a senior deuce is when Glenn has a draw for three. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I think you got to give him a little more credit than that, Mark. Absolutely. Oh, I know. Thank you, Emily. Just pulling, pulling <laughs> his cane a bit. This is really curling, Mark. I don't know if he's going to... You going to clip it? Yeah. Uh, 
And as we say, he smashes it into wow. the boards. But it doesn't matter if it hit it by an inch or hit it by six inches. He made the shot. So really not much happening here in the first stand. No, pretty uneventful. Just He's trying to get just, their legs under them. Going to draw straws with a wing here. Try to get some draw weight established. We'll see if we can get a time now in the next couple of draws to let people know what the what is running. Mark, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, um, young Devin Ryan, I think he might be Mike Ryan's son from Labrador West. Mike he, is a two is, or three time senior champion, and he's been to the Briar. And uh, he is Mike Ryan's son. Wonderful player. And I remember I asked uh, Mike there a couple of months ago. Uh, I said, "Your son now is living in St. John." And he said, "Yes." He he got banished from the big land. Ah. Uh, but now huh. apparently he just got a new job, him and, and his girlfriend, and they're both moving back to uh, Lab West. Oh, good for so, them. Good for them. He's a nice young fella. He uh, he speared a few games with us earlier this season. He's a big man, too. I don't know. Um, I would never have said he's Mike, because Mike is not as, as a big a man as this guy, but they're built the same way, strong and... And powerful. Well, his dad is a great guy. I've known him a long time, as you have. Great player, too. Yep. Oh. That's not well. what that's not what we were expecting to see. And not only did he, did he miss it, he moved it into the back of the oh, forefoot. Oh, yeah. That's... So All of a sudden, gonna... the blank is more difficult. Now you're going to see Dave Thomas doesn't want to play a long guard because that will enable Lambswood to come around it. But if he draws to the top of the 12-foot, you're still going to give Lambswood maybe a double, but it will be a party of six or seven-foot shot as opposed to... Uh, I'd be tempted, Mark, to draw to the wide side and force, and force the one. And force one. Me too. Like if uh, you could make this perfect and then... They make the double. He makes the double and he's blanking it anyway. Blanks on anyway. So if you want to take advantage of the uh, of the force, that's a good point, Glenn. And even if you don't go to the wing, even if you just go to the top of the eight, but like a foot and a half off the center line. It makes it more difficult, absolutely. But I think if you go to the wing, I don't think, on, if you can line them up, then McNeil Lambs would, there is no double. Well, anywhere here in front, if he's in, he's gonna, Lambs is going to play the double. Absolutely. In the first end. He's not going to be cute and try to draw around. Uh, this line looks uh, looks pretty close here. It should finish. Yeah, the ice has been wonderful, Mark. This week, it's you're getting four, four and a half feet of curl, uh, and it's almost like skins ice. It rides the line until it gets just outside the hog line. Then it then it breaks, and it's, it's you can there's nowhere you can't get to, which is really nice. Well, the line is good here, but I think it was a little bit deeper than Dave Thomas wanted. It's only about a two and a half foot double here now, and Lambswood is going to take it on. The split time on that one, the uh, hog to hog time was fifteen six. That was quick for a viewing audience. So that's fairly fast. First end, it will probably lighten up even a bit more now in the second, third ends. Mark, if you take that rock and you move it six feet to our left, um, it's a much more difficult double. Much more difficult. This is a for these guys that they hit so well. Uh, this should be pretty close, I would think, right out of his hand. This is, for a lot of these guys, this is their bread and butter shot. They haven't laid a broom on it. No, he's pretty good, I think. That was a pretty routine shot, I think, for for, for those guys. For yeah. Oh, well, Dave Thomas going to try to hit and stay, maybe uh, roll to a new spot or a different spot and uh, see what happens. Yeah, so by making that double, it's, it negates the flash. It and, does indeed. And Dave could have could have made them pay for that, but he didn't, so he chose not to. But maybe he satisfied the blank as well. So He might be, but that said, the only positive for that for Dave, he did get draw weight because he laid it in the top of the forefoot, so he sort of got a, a bit of confidence now in what the speed is. I think Dave has draw weight in his sleep. He makes an awful lot of draws. Very unassuming when you watch them when you watch them come out of the hack. But like you said, there's a number of players like that, and they make a ton. He makes a pile. Well, you'd hate to stick this now after making that double, wouldn't you? <laughs> you would. <laughs> but now, again, he got to get the blank here to make it worth his while. 
But it's not the end of the world if he takes one. No, but this is what they played for. Not this is what they blank. played for. This is what the strategy was all in. No, he's not wide. He's okay. Yeah, that's a nice rock by it. Hold on. Well, from Ryan's land, would the positive on that, he made two nice rocks at the first end. So did Dave Thomas. So both skips are carrying a bit of confidence now going forward. And lots of weight, Mark. Uh, as you said earlier, uh, two blue, two two round rocks hitting square. When you throw it that hard, you've got to be right on the nut in order to in order to to stick it. So and it still happens. And it absolutely it Just can happen. It's is uncanny how many times it does happen. Now, you yeah, might see Lambswood get a little bit uh, more aggressive here in the second end. You might. Glenn, I wish you and I had a dollar for every time we went to blank and we, we oh nodded. Oh, my gosh. If, I had, if Emily had a dollar for every time I tried to blank, she'd be able to buy her lunch for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing as hard as I can, and Emily's sweeping it, saying, control. I'm going, what? <laughs> <laughs> So Dave is going to try to muck it up again. He wants that. He wants a center guard, but the boys are not touching this, and it is curling uh, it's a gonna, lot. It's going to cross the line here. Francis might have got that. Uh, might have helped it. Might have helped us with a bit of a rotation on us. Uh, you might see uh, Lambs would use this one. Well, it's a foot off the line, and he's indicating now he's going to try to get uh, Feltham, Aaron Feltham, to come around. I want to get another time on this one, I think, now. Second in, it might be a hair quicker than the first. Line looks pretty good here, Glenn. I'm coming over the hog line. A lot of finish to these rocks. That line looks pretty good. Wait, they're not touching it. Here he goes now, trying to curve it a bit. Well done by Aaron, Aaron Feltham. That's a that's good good shot. Yeah, the split we got on that one was 15, 15, one five, 15, 15. So yeah, this looks to be between fifteen one five, and we had one last, and it's fifteen six. Now that that now the rock we just saw never they weren't they hardly swept it. So if you got sweeping weight, you're that, probably going to be 15, 15, fifteen six, fifteen seven. Yeah, that got there on its own. So yeah, so they're in that mid fifteens range, which is fairly quick. But most of these players, Glenn, when we started, or at least when I started back in 68, don't realize the struggle we had. Uh, first end would be eight, <laughs> yeah. and it, it would lighten up to 12. <laughs> right? Yeah, no, And I the wasn't... struggle was real. Yeah, it was, give me board weight, and what's that? Eight, an eight-second hit was board weight. Oh, my gosh. So the ice these days is so far superior than what we grew up on. But again, technological advancements. Oh, yeah, the All the top ice are... makers now, Kern and Canada has a certification program for ice making. At the national championships, there's a selection of top people that put the ice into these big rinks and whatnot. At the conditions, the and, stones, and, and, and the, the condition of the players themselves. It's, well, it's that, just a different, it's a different game. Another, another aspect people don't talk about, back then people used straw brooms which left an awful lot of dirt on the ice. And now with the push brooms being the predominant uh, piece of equipment now to sweep with, uh, it's completely different. I think that was one of the reasons, Mark. I, I didn't start till, till, till late. I didn't get an opportunity to play junior curling, but I, uh, one of the reasons I took to skip pretty uh, pretty early was I couldn't sweep. <laughs> so if I wanted to play I, I, with a decent team, I had to, I didn't want to, me sweeping. I took to that position in my second year for the <laughs> exact same reason. Uh, can't do it. Jeff Cunningham, uh, who I think was one of the best corn broom sweepers I've ever seen. I know he is. Um, I, Jeff used to beat his brooms up and then pass them on to me. So I could at least make a slapping noise with them when I was when oh, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff was a strong, strong oh, sweeper. One of the strongest I've ever seen. But there are a number of them in the country that are, you know, a lot of good sweepers, and all the top teams had good sweepers. Anyway, that was a great come around there. It forces uh, 
Lambs would to go back and try to get a peel. So we got Graham, Graham Weagle in the hack here now. Graham Weagle is the, he skipped the Nova Scotia team to the under 18 Canadian Championship oh, there a number of years ago. And he's played in a couple of uh, Canadian juniors representing uh, Nova Scotia. So another. Is he in university, Mark? Is that what he's doing here? Or? Uh, he, he's an import player from Nova Scotia with Team Lambswood. Now, they would have guys would have known this guy from the junior nationals would have, right where they are. first met. But uh, he's an excellent player. I don't know him really well, but he seems to be a great guy, good team player, but he got a very, um, very good curling resume. Not easy in Canada to win a national championship at any level. Junior, senior, mixed men's ladies, doesn't really matter. To it get is, to one. It, is, it's is hard impressive. to get to one. Really difficult to win one. This one's going pretty hard too, Mark. Going to sneak it by, I think. They need to get a buy. And he does. Now, if they can punch that up, that's probably a, not so bad anymore. That's pretty That's pretty I, good. That's better than freezing to it because now it makes it harder to get that. The yellow one out. The second shot rock out. And it gives something for Dave Thomas. If he gets a chance, he can slash into it. And this is Dave's strength. Um, is this quiet, tap back, soft stuff? Uh, I was surprised to see him... Uh, try to make a run back at the start of this end, and it didn't work out. But he's changed gears. Well, he went back to the come around corner back, freeze. Uh, uh, yeah, and it's working out he for him. He probably made that, but there's only about a fifty. A shot is about fifty times harder. But that's the strength of the team. Yeah, not everybody is adept at the run backs, especially with up weight. It's a uh, what we got here. Well, that wasn't really what they were looking for, and that's just what we said might happen, Glenn. Yeah. By bumping out a foot, it made it much more difficult to get out. But now Dave has to make a decision. I think you just guard. That yellow rock is behind the corner guard. If he puts a good guard on this, it's going to be, uh, you're going to have to see Lambs would play, excuse me, see Lambs would play another run back. And that one behind the corner guard, Mark, really shortens up the rings on uh, McNeil Lambswood. Well, it's, now it's we gone got, from 12 feet to about four and a half feet four, already. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I think that rock is in a good spot. And it takes away the corner guard right. for Lambswood at the same time. That's one of the best defenses against the corner guard. Put it high in the eight foot. And, and, and take it away. Take yeah. it away. Well, he got his guard. A little tight, I think, man. Yeah. If that was a couple of feet out, it he, would give he, a... He might try to run that into the one that's buried. Well, I think there's enough room. He can come through a hole with, with uh, the quiet weight if you wanted to and try to keep both blue rocks in the eight foot. But you could hammer it, that yellow guard. But again, you got there's three rocks you're going into. So you got to make sure you hit it properly or it might not work quite work out the way you expect it. That's the danger when you're trying to run back the opposition stone. If that was his own stone, there would be no hesitation. Because he'd have he it got, thrown by now. Yeah, he'd have it thrown by now. But here you got to be a little more careful on the angles. It's the first of the third's stones, um, so there's no panic yet in terms of Making sure you score one. Well, anyway, there's a panic. Is. I mean, they're only Dave Thomas is only lying one, and, and Lambert has a rock in the top of the four foot, and they have fourth, uh, fifth shot, fourth shot at the back of the rings, in the back of the yeah. rings, and the in the twelve foot. So there's still some opportunity here. As Daniel Bruce shooting his first rock, another fine player makes an awful lot of shots. I don't know if that's quite the uh, outcome. Oops. Now Dave Thomas gets a guard on it, and we talked about uh, those angles on those runbacks uh, when you're hitting an opposition stone. Yeah. It looked to me like he threw it pretty good, so maybe the ice was a, a little generous. Or they were playing, were they playing the straight run back? I, I would I'm, I'm not sure, or maybe there was a miscommunication with the weight. The weight never seemed to be up a lot. It was more like their normal hit weight, probably about a 9 or 9.5. And they didn't Second seem hit. to panic on the line, Mark. So I, it, I'm it not looked really to me, sure I was, I'm right behind the sheet here, and he threw that pretty straight. So maybe they just got fooled by that little extra weight in that spot, but it never came up at all. Oh, 
Dave Thomas throws to Garrett here. Needed to, probably needed to curl another foot. Six inches to a foot. There's still a hole here for uh, Team Lambswood. So Daniel Bruce is going to get a shot at redemption here. He's going to try to get through the hole, I believe, and maybe a little roll to the middle. I don't know if there's a double available to him with the way the uh, Thomas Rocks are lined up. He's got, it looks, appears to be a little less weight than his first stone. It's going to have to curl a little bit, I believe. He's going to be tight getting through the hole. Through the hole and just rolls a little, I think a little more than they had hoped. It gives Dave Thomas a hit and roll back in. But he did eliminate one, one Thomas stone. So again, a big shot here for now, now for Dave Thomas. If he can hit and roll back in and uh, put some pressure back on uh, teams Lam Team Lambswood again. Dave Thomas's uh, stone stone is on his way. They haven't laid a broom on it yet. Here they go now. Tells me it must be close. And he got to roll in on top of his own, but I think they're right in the middle of in the, the hole. hole. So I think they can double them out there now, potentially. Yeah, the mark the blue one that's at the back of the at a, uh, like four o'clock as we look at it. It could theoretically come in to be the second shot, but the second point. But the way those two yellows are lined up, it looks like the front one goes right into the blue. It could very well, and like you said, is it's not going to be an easy double. He got to get a good chunk of that with a, a, a decent amount of weight to double that out. If it doesn't, if it doesn't lock up on that blue rock in, at, in the uh, in the twelve foot. Yeah, I think you should. I think what he's playing here is a hit and roll behind that center guard. Well, now if it Bruce's does. last rock took a long time to come off the center line, and he just got by that yellow guard. So I, I would think that Lambswood has gone to school on that line, and is probably going to tighten it up a hair. But if it if it comes off the line a bit, I don't think. I think if he, if he just nuts that top yellow one, it's not. There's going to be no double. No, you're right. Yeah. And he might push the one he hits into his a, own a foot or so off, so Thomas has a straight take up through the hole on his last one to lie a couple. Yeah, I think he'd like to roll behind the center here. Well, I think they've changed turns. Oh, interesting. He's, he's playing the intern after just asking Daniel Bruce for an yes. outturn. Well, it, that, that had to look ugly with with the outturn from the other end. So here we are. Every uh, well. Bit of sweeping here now. He's through the hole. I assume. Whoa. If it and it went on, under. If it hangs on. Oh. No. They just got it out. So uh, he made the double but lost his shooter. I think that uh, curled a bit more than they anticipated. Yeah, and I think if he makes it, Mark, it does go into the blue. So I think he was sort of. Well, he hit it thin. That's how it went underneath. That's how it went underneath. Yeah. yeah. So. Dave Thomas now just trying to hit hit and stay out here wide or maybe get a roll into the back of the rings. They haven't laid a broom on it. Sweeping it now, hoping it's going to come up. And just peels it out. Well, okay, I guess both teams are stay, satisfied as a blank. Mark, while they're doing this, I don't, I don't think he's going to miss this one. I wouldn't think. Well, it's a throw through. 
You hope not. No, you would hope not, yeah. I just want to congratulate our tech support here, Emily Neary. Uh, Emily, God love her. She played a bunch of curling games with us this year, the senior guys. And uh, not only being the best player on the team, she was probably the the most personable and enjoyable to play with. But em Emily uh, recently was awarded the Academic All-Canadian Award for an overall average in Memorial of 80% or higher while playing at the U-sport level, university level. That is, that's, that's cutting, that's splitting yourself pretty thin to be able to do both at that high level, to be able to play university sports and then academically get 80% or higher. It's, it's incredible. Not only that, but she also made the Dean's List on academics alone. So, uh, I have to ask her. She's such an intelligent woman. Why, why did you agree to play with us this year? And before, and, and before she, re, she responds, not only that, but at U Sport, she was an all star. So incredible! It's wonderful. There's a lot it's goes into stuff. That. Wonderful. It's, it's uh, yeah. It's, we're proud to know you, dear. Proud to know you. It's wonderful. And no, you're not allowed to quit our team. <laughs> It is fun. And she just came third in the Newfoundland Provincial Mixed Doubles with Dylan Hancock. Yeah, they did. They had a good run out in so, Port Basque. Yeah, had a good run in Port Basque, which is Dave Thomas's hometown. Well, he and his daughter had a pretty good run, too. Another junior player with a bright future. And we have a number of them here in St. John's, or playing in this event, actually. Not just St. John's, but from around the island. Glenn, I would think there's not many players when we look at on the sheet that never came up through juniors. Uh, no, maybe I, just I, a couple. Maybe a couple on Dave's team. Maybe I don't know if Dave did or not, to be honest with you. But I, I think everybody else did. Um, I was, I was a hockey player up to 22, 22 years of age. So I didn't play until I was twenty-two. I, and I remember when you gave it up. Why did you give it up, Glenn? Well, uh, every every Monday when I went to work, I couldn't walk straight. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not exactly the, the the big power forward of. So I took to this sport. I met my wife, and she got me involved in curling. And I threw ninety six rocks my first day. I couldn't walk. Yeah, I, that. I borrowed Jeff Thomas's slider, and I couldn't walk for and, about three know, days. You know what we call that? A newbie mistake. Oh, it was a big <laughs> one. Ninety six. I can't. I I don't think I ever threw ninety six rocks after, even when I knew how to play the game. <laughs> But I just got so addicted to it. It's just a... Well, at our age now, I'll be lucky if I throw 96 in the this season. Year, this year, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it was... In the... Dave Thomas put a guard up, and Aaron Felton came around to the forefoot, perfectly behind it, and now uh, Dave Thomas is trying to come around and get a corner freeze on that. Well, they're line, getting lots of curl, Mark. Line is starting to look pretty good. And it looks like he's going to have a beauty. Great shot by uh, Floyd Francis. And right away now, a couple of bank ends, so maybe this is the end. We're going to get some uh, something going and put a number up on the board. And this is what Dave Thomas and his team will do to you. They've got wonderful soft touch, and that's their that's their bread and butter. Well, the thing, when the ice is swinging, Glenn, and you got good soft touch, you don't have to be 100% accurate on the broom right you can glob it out there and as i always tell my sweepers just going to lay it out there boys try not to screw it up oh god so you know it doesn't have to be perfect that's to be what a my good... sweepers tell me when i'm throwing it <laughs> don't screw it up <laughs> that's the other it's an side. open hit don't screw <laughs> it up <laughs> that's the other side of the coin anyway the uh Aaron Feldham came right down on top of that. Yeah. So we're into an end here now. You're going to see a number of rocks in play here. I can you can sort of tell by the way the the end is progressing here. Well, well right they, away nobody can nobody can play a hit on that guard yet. But uh, and that yellow one's going nowhere without Lamb's Woods next rock could be a could potentially be a peel, depending where this stone ends up. But the line looks pretty good on it right now. They haven't laid a broom on it yet. That's going to be close to that guard. It, it's all the curl is later, and a curl it, it walks right over. Whoa, sneaks by. And again, 
Man. Just changes the angles a bit. Another great rock. I think that that was thrown by Devin Ryan, so another that's uh, another beauty. There hasn't been a rock missed yet this end. No. Again, both teams appear to have draw weight now, third end. But Ryan uh, doesn't like the look of this. Um, it's going to, the rings are really small to try to get your deuce. Uh, so he's just going to try to rearrange the the situation if he can. He'd love to click that or clip that yellow one that's at the top of the 12 foot with the guard as it's going by. But it looks a little bit on the wide side. Yep. Well, they got rid of the guard, and Dave Thomas is going to replace it. And what's interesting, Mark, is um, the you if, if you're lucky enough to clip that top, hit that top yellow one, both blues will go. Yes, absolutely. And if, well, you've hit it with enough weight, you could end up yellow could lie three. Could lie three, that's and right. And the two blue rocks could be gone, just the way the angles are right now. But again, a couple of rocks later, those angles can be all changed around. Yeah, and know. I think that's what Ryan is trying to do. He's trying to rearrange it. He doesn't like the angles, and I don't blame him. We got a guard here, but it's starting to curl. I don't know if that's going to over curl a hair, because all the finish is late here. No, it's it's stopping up. It's going to be as good throw. Another good throw by Devin Ryan. Well, Lambs was looking like he might be playing in the rings here. Well, Ryan has changed tunes, changed his tune again. He's not going to run the guard in. I thought he might try to arrange, well, rearrange this, but this is getting to be a little more uh, dangerous type it, of setup here now. So it is, it is so. Now this rock looks like it's starting to curl on him. I don't know if they're going to get by the guard on this. This is that's well short too. Well short too. And that might have been. Maybe that's the biggest thing to attribute to the curl. So now there's a double guards on it. If Dave can ever get rid of that yellow, that blue rock. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be guarding on this side, I, Mark. I'd, well, not with the double guards. Now I try to pick that blue one. You either either that or you or you take the outturn draw away. But guarding the blue one, I don't know what that gets you. That just solidifies one point for uh, for Lambswood. So. Well, it would, it would end up giving him a draw for two. Yeah, or a hit for two. Right. Because he's still got access on the outturn. On the outturn side. That's that, that's the, the trouble for, for Dave Thomas now, is Lambswood can go our, go around everything, get the edge of the button. Now, granted, it's 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 a small circle to hit, but it is, it is a shot. So you throw a guard on this, and you're saying, here, we're going to force you to one. I, I'd, I'd either try to pick it off or take the, take the draw away on the other turn. Absolutely. And playing the pick mark, as you suggested, is probably not a bad idea because you can't, well, it, it, famous it, last word, I was going to say you can't pick your own out. But. You don't have to play it with a ton of weight. You can just play it with that. With, uh, Move it up to four foot. Yeah. Just back line weight if you want to. Or maybe, maybe hack. Oh. This has a lot of curling to do. and But it, you can see it's, it's, so it's starting to walk right over here. Oh, no. They chipped it in. Now I don't know how they're going to get rid of it. Well, they've given Lambswood a way to get a second rock in there now is what they've done. And it's pretty sure that's not what Dave Thomas was looking for in that round. No, and Lambswood couldn't score now on both turns. Absolutely. Which he couldn't do before. Which he couldn't do before. We got Emily working here now, trying to get you an update across the board. No. Don't fall out the window there. Well, big shot here now for Daniel Bruce. If he can get a little hit and roll here into the back of the one foot. Oh, 
they're three in is out. They're, in, they're in business for a three under. They've been on and off just a little bit coming down here now. This should finish with this speed. This should be pretty close with that speed. I never rolled quite enough. That's pretty good though, Mark. Not bad. I think Dave got to hit it or push it back. And I don't believe there's a double on the blues. I think that's a little bit deeper than the than the than yeah, shot. There's, rock. No, there's no double there, Glenn. But uh, but the thing about it, he doesn't want to hit and roll a foot or two to the broom side because then it gives Lambs with the same shot. Same if he can shot hit he just and had. stay right there, he might have access to a slash on his next rock to get rid of that blue. Yeah, rock. It might force Lambswood to play a guard on a it. A guard on it, and then Dave could guard the other turn and say, "Here, have one." And, well, it, it might give him a wide draw, yeah. possibly, or depending where the guard ends up. So this is a bit of a tricky shot here, too. It's almost better if they hit and roll away completely as opposed to roll a foot. Where they did that, yeah. It's got to curl a little bit, I think. Well, that's good. That's like you suggested, Mark. Hit and roll away. Yeah, hit and roll away. That's fine. Well, they got it right out, so that's enough. Yeah, that's fine. That's better than rolling a foot. But by playing that shot a couple of rocks ago, Mark, where they hit and roll to the edge of the four, it allows, well, Lambs, what I mean, it allows, or Dave Thomas, it allows Lambswood now to, 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 to draw. He's going to have a draw for two. One turn or the other, I would expect. Absolutely. Unless there's a miscue by somebody. So he's trying to get around now, I think, into the forefoot here to set up a deuce. That line looks a little bit tight to me, but... I, he's not going to get... He's going to be on the guards here. That's that's really over-curling a lot. It looks like it's tight, yeah. They're working it, trying to get it through, but... Where it bounces now is... I don't know. I don't think it hurts him. Well, I think what it entitles gives Dave Thomas, Dave Thomas can come around it. He can. I don't know what else Dave Thomas got. No, I think he's going to have to. He's all in here now. I think they can feel, they can sense the importance of the situation here, Mark. They're uh, they're having a conference trying to make sure they pick the right shot here. And I think you're right. I think well, he's got no alternative. It's... I don't know what else he has. He doesn't have the hammer. The opposition are lying one. And so even he, if he gets half under, it's raised it into the blue. Be if it happened, or what it does, it just, then it forces Ryan Lamsworth to go to the intern draw. Right. Which, he, which a different shot than what he just played. And a smaller area to and hit. A smaller area to hit. Yeah. Yeah. If this gets around half, and it's ha even if it's half open, top of the, and it's not shot rock, it closes off that, that turn. Right. Because he can't raise him when he just shot. And Lambswood may have to guard it because you could you could angle it into shot rock, yeah. if if you don't guard it. So it's a real cat and mouse going on here, and we're down to about a four foot curling area or a scoring area. Maybe not even four feet, yeah, but maybe four feet. And this is the kind of stuff Dave Thomas thrives on. So we'll see. Big shot here for Dave Thomas. And again, Glenn, we've alluded to these are the kind of shots that these guys like. Yeah, Dave makes an awful lot of these. Now this line doesn't look too bad here now. But it, it finishes hard, so yeah. you got to keep it out there and assume it's going to break. It's coming here now. It will break. It's coming here now. If they can get it by, he might have a pistol. Got to try to curl it a little bit. Well, what? it's interesting. Shot. No, it's, it's, it is interesting. Well, it closes off. That, that turn for a draw, yeah. I don't know if he can do much with that side. Now, this is his first rock coming up, I believe. 
It is Ryan's first rock, yeah. So he can he can try to hit it. I don't know if he's not going to get if he if he only hits and rolls a foot, he's going to give Dave Thomas a double coming back. Or if he rolls out, he's giving him the same shot. Same, twice. same shot again. <clears throat> the thing about it, if he guards it, Dave, Dave Thomas guards the other turn. Right, and you're forced and, to and one anyway, to, and you're forced to one anyway. Yeah, so I think he's playing right into the rings. Try to, try, I think what he's calling is uh, freeze it on the nose. That gives him two shots then to score. Absolutely. Good call. If he's, if yeah, no, it's a good call. You just gotta make sure you don't gotta make it. it. Don't you don't bump it up a foot. Yeah. So when we uh, get through this end, now we'll do, give a, as we call it here, a cross country checkup across all six sheets. And we alluded to that the last couple of days, and we gave full credit to Rex Murphy. Mm -hmm. But we can't have Rex here. He's not much of a corridor, I don't believe. His line looks pretty good, Mark. It's, it seems to be pretty close to the same line that Dave Thomas uh, had. It's going to have to come up a bit, but all the curl here is from the hog line in, and it's starting to bend here now. And those guys are pretty good sweepers, yeah. so I don't know if they, if they can get it, lock it right on or not. Well, that might not be too bad because he could still raise it for two, I think. Well, actually, you could, if you wanted to take it on and hammer it at an angle, you could you could make a double on those yellows, the way they're lined up. Now, you might miss them and take your own, but it's a chance you play. Don't know how much risk... They I want think, to take on here. I think Dave is probably forced to. Like the big, Dave is probably going to guard that raise and hope they don't well, hit the forfeit on the other side. If they put it on the other side, that hammer that off the one that uh, Dave threw, if you hit half of that and the shooter comes over, you can get rid of that other yellow and you can end up with a big end. Potentially, uh, there could be a three spot there. Oh. But he might he might not take that on depending where Dave puts this rock. He's gonna he's it looks like Dave is gonna give him the chance to play the the run back for two. Unless Dave can hit that hit the T line. Oh, he's changed his mind. It's been a slow end. They've eaten up a I don't know what the time is. We can't see the timers here, but I would say they've eaten up a bit of time on this uh on this end for sure. But a couple other games are still in the second end, so we'll uh, we'll see now and try to get an update across the board here for all the most of the games. Hopefully, it'll be close to being finished and have the third end posted. So I'm try to take the uh, the run back away from Lambswood, and uh, and Ryan is going to have the. Uh, the intern draw to the to the T line, I guess. Yeah, give or take. He's got room. Not a lot now, mind you, but there is room. Assuming they make this. Assuming they make this. So he's just playing a straight guard here and is try to take away that run back. But now it's that might over curl out of my hair. No, I think no, they're happy not. with the line, I think yeah. They're okay with that. So I think he's got to draw the on the intern to the He gotta hit what he can see. Pretty much you gotta hit what he can see. Well the, the Dave Thomas's first rock is three quarters or eighty percent into the forefoot. So he that makes it that much tougher again. So he got to get mostly into the forefoot here. You can only see a, the uh, probably a foot of it anyway. I, I think, Mark, we can safely say the blank is off, you think? Oh, man, well, I, I'm thinking. <laughs> maybe if Nichols was thrown, maybe he could still blank it. Well, but. there's a lot of rocks in play, but uh, it's going to be at least one for Lambswood here in the third. Big deuce if he can get it. Big deuce if he can get it after the first couple of blanks. When you got the hammer, the hammer is worth two points, so unless you can put two on the board, you try to blank. Rock's underway here. They're trying to keep it out. It's going to be tight to that going, top yellow. It's going to be close. 
It's going to be close. You got to get it by the top of your head. If he ticks it at all, the line's going to be off. Yeah, and he ticks it. His weight was perfect. Weight was perfect. No, I think it's just one. He just rubbed that yellow. Yeah. Maybe just needed to hear more ice. Just an inch. So it's just one for Lambswood. So in our feature game, after three ends, uh, one nothing after three for Lambswood over Dave Thomas. Now we're going to go across the sheets here and see what we got. Just waiting now. A couple of teams are about to post some scores. So we'll take a little uh, a second just to make sure that we got uh, most of the scores updated here. And we'll give give an update after three ends for all six sheets. So that worked out for Dave Thomas, uh, Glenn. It did. It was a, it was a, it took a long while, but it's a force. It took a long while, but uh, he got the hammer now. And again, knowing Dave, I expect to see a few rocks in play again, and they'll try to put a put a deuce on the board. I think that's his strength, Mark. I think he should stay with the strength, because I don't think I, I you know as good a player as that as Dave's team is. I don't like the rods of going up and down the sheet throwing hits with these guys. Uh, so I think he's got to muck it up. Play to your strength. Absolutely. So we're going to take a quick uh, run across the board now. And sheet one, which is a men's game. We have our two junior teams that are in this event are playing head-to-head. -head. So for both those teams, regardless of what their record is, it's a big game. Currently, it's just 2-1 to one for Hancock versus Tipple in the third. Sheet two is one of our ladies' games. It's two to one for Brooke Gosland versus Haley Guju. They're playing the fourth, so that's two to one after three. Sheet three, uh, defending champion Stacy Curtis taking on Sarah Boland, and currently it is five to one for Boland after three with a big steal of three in the third. Our feature game is one nothing for Lambswood over Thomas. Sheet five is a uh, one to one after two ends. They haven't finished the third yet. Uh, Harold Walters and Nathan Young. And sheet six, it is two to one after three for Team Simmons over Team Skeins. We'll give another update, folks, another end or two. So that's where everybody currently stands. In our game, Mark, uh, while you were giving the update, I noticed, uh, I, I guess the viewers could see Aaron Feltham hogged the first one, which a bit of a shock when you think about it, playing the, playing the fourth end. Uh, but he was trying to... Trying to be precise, and I guess it just got stuck in his hand, and he hogged it. Anyway. I, I hate it when it gets stuck in your hand. Oh, my gosh. It and does, Dave, it Dave does happen. It does happen. And Dave sent, uh, sent a message. He threw a corner guard right off the bat. So, he's as you said, he's going to get into it. So, here we go. Corner guard, and then Felton puts a second one right back in the middle. And it is biting the center line. So it can't be removed till at least a six rock at the end. And for our viewers, the rules in play are a five rock, no tick, free guard zone. Mark, would you be playing this shot with the, you got a corner guard, you got last rock, corner guard, and a center guard. Um, would you be playing around the center? No, I would not. I would, the reason you put the corner guard up is you might, sometimes it takes you the whole end to use it, but they can use it the very next shot. I'd try to get it around the corner and draw to play away now what we're seeing here now is that was going to hit the rock that was on the center line which can't be removed from the center line to the six rock at the end so that pretty much is a wasted shot by a team thomas another reason why i'd like to come around because we've ticked so many rocks this year on that center line is unbelievable but but uh, as you said like he threw a corner guard that widens the rings for him. By going around the center, he's shrinking the rings on him. So yep, absolutely. Go around the corner. You know, I don't think in the fourth end in a one nothing game that Lambs was going to go around the center to try to steal one. He'd probably try to follow you around uh, around the corner, and that's where you want to be. You want to, when you got last rock, be out on the wings and leave the center open. Now, Graham Weagle, he's, he seems to be struggling with his weight a little bit. He just put it right in the back of the 12-foot. So again, is in is in play for Team Lambs, but but is not uh, is not causing much concern yet for Dave Thomas. I still think Thomas should come around that corner guard, but maybe he has other ideas. Well, I agree he with you. To, uh, he's got two chances to go around the corner guard, and this is his second one, and he's still not. Well, they're going to peel the. He can't, can he?
Yeah, it's a six rock at the end. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. I lost count. Yeah, well, the last rock was uh, Graham Weagle's first rock. So he's second stones. That was the fifth rock at the end. So, like for me, you know, um, not to second guess Dave Thomas, but he's flip flopping back and forth between trying to score and trying not to get scored on. Yeah. And it's, um, there doesn't seem to be any consistency in what it is he's trying to do. Not for me, anyway. Um, but he's out there and I'm in here, so he knows better than I. Well, and me. Same with, same thing, Glenn. But they're just going to try to put that guard back. Now, that's a long guard. I think Dave has to come around that corner guard now. He's thinking about it. And there we go. And as we say, Glenn, game on. Yep. You can get a good draw here. And that drags the play away from the drags middle. The and play and, away from the middle. Yeah, and if he can sink one here, deuce is on. Absolutely. It should finish nicely here, I would think. This looks like it's starting to come there now. And once it crosses that slot and it really breaks hard. Oh, they... I think they left they, it weight-wise a little bit sweep. too long. Yeah. They missed the sweep. Advantage McNeil-Lamswood. It just keeps going back and forth, this doesn't it? This has been going back and forth. I guess this is the kind of end where somebody says first in wins. But Lamswood has a chance to get around that center guard again. Daniel Bruce currently throwing. They got loads of line on this one, Glenn, again. I don't know if they're getting full, if the ice is changing and they're getting fooled by the line a bit, but starting to break hard now. His weight seems pretty good. Huh? I think it goes back to what you were saying, Mark. The guard is so long that it's really not even... Well, I think you can play, play tight by that guard with backline weight and almost knows that rock they just threw yeah. with the curl available. Such a long guard. Yeah. And so. the, it's such a nice curl. The ice is wonderful. All the players are talking about how great it is. It's fast. It's consistent. And some players might even over, if they can get it going tight by the guard, might over curl it. Because there is a lot of curl there coming down. Especially, I think there's more curl on the intern side coming towards the glass here. It looks like it. Well, we haven't had many... On the other turn, that's uh, this is a big shot for Mike Mullins. This is all weight. You can't overthrow it. He's not wide. They got Devin on it here, and he can hold. He's a strong sweeper. And here you go. Yeah, that's curling there. It goes back to what you said, Mark. Oh, look, he kn he knows it. Throw back line weight, and you can nose it. Yeah. So the guard's not really even in the in your well, way well actually he put if you see where it ends up that's perfect that's really good that's really good yeah little wall of china built up at the back absolutely. of the absolutely so i guess uh Daniel Bruce is going to have to try to duplicate that. Well, we just see, we just saw that you can get to the nose of this with the, uh, you know, backline hack type weight. And he wasn't really that close to the guard, was he, when he got by? He got by the guard a couple for two inches. or three inches. Yeah, yeah, there's tons of room. Now this is a little wider line. It is. And they got uh, and heavier. We on it here now. He might not touch this. He had that little extra weight from Mike Mullins. Okay, advantage swings back to Dave Thomas. Yeah, absolutely. Come around the middle again now, if you can get right on top of it. Uh, Mike Mullins, he was our 2023 Newfoundland, on the uh, 2023 Newfoundland Club Championship team with Baz Buckle. Mark, from what I understand too, Ryan McNeil Lamswood is a really accomplished golfer. 
he might be a better golfer than he is a curler. He's down. I know his, hear, his handicap is down in single digits. Yeah, or or maybe plus. And uh, well, that's a different game than I'm playing. So. Well, me too. <laughs> now this is a if that can curl a little bit more. That's not a bad shot. He did push the shot rock out in the open a little bit, so that would make it accessible to uh, the Lambswood team. But still, a very good shot. Well, the way the angles are there, it's hard for Lambswood to, to hit that because it could just jam on the back blue uh, the back blue rock. So he's got to draw down to it. So right now, there's a big swing in the momentum in this end. It's damage it's, control, I think, is what this is well, all about. He's sort of got to get on top of that blue or yellow rock a bit, or it's uh, Dave Thomas is going to be setting up for a two or three under here. Okay, we're underway here. I'm Ryan Lambswoods, McNeil Lambswoods, first rock. Might get a time on this too, Mark. See if the ice has changed or not. I think Emily is working on that. Oh, this is well yeah, short, though. Well short. Really underthrew it. Big swing here in advantage. If Dave Thomas can make this next rock here now. Oof. We all, when I used to coach the juniors, I always said, when when do you have to make the, the best shot? The best shot to make is when the other guy misses a rock. Make, make the very next it. one to make them pay for make it. Make them pay for it. Yeah, so if Dave Thomas can get this into the top of the forefoot around those. And the guards are staggered. They're not even available for a run back anymore. This is a huge shot here for Dave Thomas. Looks like they're probably talking, maybe talking about uh, the exact placement here. Now, Mark, that wasn't close. I don't know... No, it wasn't close. I'm thinking, I don't know if the ice has changed or... or... he hit something or hit a flat spot. I don't know, but that's 15... But he's had a couple of draws 15, with, that rock, with that rock, so I don't think it's the rock. No, it might have hit something. They gave up on it pretty quickly. Well, the, uh, I think it only curled that much because the weight was... was so, was so, yeah, so, so, so soft, yeah. Yeah. It just didn't carry at all, and, and it's a... It's, it, Going back to what you just said, you you'd like to make a rock, uh, make your make the one after a guy misses, make him pay. Absolutely. And if Dave can get this in top of the eight foot somewhere, what do you got? You got Devin Ryan. They're trying to hold the line now. So it looks like he's going to be by the guard, but they didn't. They need to get it into the eight foot here. They got to get it in for third shot, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. I don't just know, little, it's close, just but... Just a little bit late. I think he's fourth shot. And if you ever get the chance, oh. that back blue one is accessible on the intern. This is going to be a tough shot here for... Uh, the hold is big enough, Glenn, I believe. That goes another foot, Mark. And... Uh, it's going to be tough. For every foot that comes, it is going to negate that hole. Yeah, it makes and the hole smaller and smaller, the way, that, the, the, way the guards it, are staggered. Because the way they're staggered, exactly right, Glenn. This is a big shot for uh, for Lambs who are coming it, up here. It now. is, and and knowing that he wasn't close on his first, it's um, well. It, it, he doesn't have to be shot. if he can get it into the eight foot for second shot. Yeah, get it in the it way. It might cut the damage down. <laughs> get it in the way. Well, yeah. Get, yeah, get it in the way, so it's not open for. Uh, but he got to navigate the hole first. But the freeze is there, isn't it? If he gets to the hole with draw weight, if it gets in, there, you can freeze right on the pin. And then you're going to force Thomas to play a run back or a tap up on his own in the eight foot. But this is a big shot. Now the sweepers getting, are liking not, this weight a little better. Yeah, he got more weight on this shot. Here it comes. It looks like he's starting to come there gotta now. Got to get by the yellow. Is he going to get by the guard? He's through. He's through the hole, I think. Oh, good shot. Folks, in curling, that's what you call a pistol. That is a pistol. And the draw weight on that was 15.4. So I think it tells me, Mark, that something went screwy with his first one. I think so, too. But now, because of that curl and that, that is available for it is Dave Thomas. For three. Half a rock for three. We know it curls there. Just a hack board weight. 
I'm sure Dave now is wishing he's gotten his he'd gotten his first one in just a foot or two farther. Oh, if he got that first one in, Ryan had a lot of trouble. But that was a great response from Ryan Mc, Ryan McNeil. That was what it was a wonderful draw, and you know you 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 can't you can't dictate what your opponent's going to do or what shot they're going to play, but you can make it as difficult for them as you can, and and he's done that. Yeah. So now you uh, you sit back and you get your fingers crossed. Yeah, on both teams. <laughs> it's got to curl a bit, I believe. Well, I don't think he got the line on us. No. No. Wow, did that change. Hey? Miss, missed opportunity for a three spot. Wow. Anyway, steal a one for Lambswood to go up 2 nothing after four. Went from three for Dave, or good opportunity for three for Dave. Actually, went from an opportunity steal. for four because if his first one comes an extra foot and a half. Oh, yeah, you're Ryan not, you're is not, thanking his lucky stars there. You're not going to get uh, many opportunities against Lambswood to put up a three spot, so... He's going to have to dig deep. That was a wonderful, that was a great shot that Ryan threw. He was under the gun, and he put it on top of the button. It's a wonderful shot. He forced his I, opponent to make it, and he couldn't. That's why they pay him the big bucks at Skip. Absolutely. Now, I'm curling big bucks might only mean $5, but... Maybe a beverage at the end of the game. Maybe a beverage at the end <laughs> of the game. Well, Aaron Felton did hog one, so it was his round. Well, that's true. So, here we go. So, he owes a Skip two now. Well, it mightn't ha the beverage mightn't happen. I don't know. Maybe he's doing dry January. Oh, no. There's only you doing that. No, there's more than me doing it. Yeah, when I mentioned that, we got comments from the peanut gallery up here. <laughs> well, he didn't do it again, did he? No. Okay. Aaron's just not feeling the draw weight, Mark, all of a sudden. The, the, well, he's a really good player. He is. Also. He's just not feeling I'm, I'm, got, I'm uh, sure Ryan doesn't want that guard two feet over the hog line. No, I'm sure he doesn't. Not after just going up two points. He could have put it through the rings. Absolutely. Be I think better off. More advantageous than that. So I don't know if he's struggling with his, with his timing or if he's struggling with the rocks, or uh, but it's just... But he's going to have to figure it out. That's the job. That's the job. Then it would be an easy game if he always had great touch and feel every game and oh. played 95%. It would make life so easy. But that's not the reality no. of it. The ice changes. People got to figure it out. And you got no control over how good the other guy plays. You just can give them as difficult shots as you want. But if they're playing, making everything, well. At least you got good you seats if they're making everything. Seats, you got good <laughs> seats to watch. Yeah, that's right. See if he gets a little Aaron, closer Aaron here. Feltham is a very nice player. He is a wonderful player. Yeah. That's why I'm a little bit, yeah. little bit. Um, and he's. The last I find it odd years, that he's missed that that by that by that margin. And well, he got picked maybe up that, a couple. He got picked up a couple of years ago by uh, Nathan Young, and he came into town for university. And uh, I've seen him improve a couple hundred percent in the last couple of seasons. He's got to be a quality player. He was a nice player when he first came in, but I think he's a lot stronger now. Understands the game a bit more as he got older. And I think he's just out of juniors. I think it's his first year out of juniors. Mark, maybe there's a rock issue because the first one is two feet over the hog line. The second one is three feet behind the tee line. Yeah, I know. There's so maybe there's maybe he's just trying to figure something out here in terms of the stones. Now somebody said a couple of games ago that there was a bad lead rock on sheet four. It was uh, the weights weren't the same. And maybe so that's what he's got. Maybe he's, he's struggling. Maybe he's struggling with trying to get the weight on the two of them. And uh, uh, it'll be talk about this um, on our senior team. Is if some, you know, if you, if you find that you've got a rock that's not reacting like all the other ones, it messes up your other one too because you don't know which one's the bad one. Uh, that's right. But years ago, uh, right now with the free with the free guard zone and the leads rocks being so important. It's more advantageous for most teams. They give if there's a bad rock, they give it to the second stone because they might be able to use it on a hit. Oh, a hit! That's right. Years ago, 
the lead would always get it. And I remember uh, my longtime lead from back then, Gene Trickett. I don't know if he seldom had two racks perfectly matched, but he figured it out and he played great all the time and ended up being an all-star lead. But again, it's something you, good players have to deal with right. when you play multiple clubs and multiple tournaments. And even at sometimes at the championship level, you have rocks that are just not a little quite the same. A little yeah. different. And it's not just the weight. Sometimes one could be a cutter. A curl, that's right. Yeah. And curls more than the other one. So not only do you have to figure it out, the skip has to figure out where to put the broom. I think Aaron's dealing with something like that, too. Yeah, he's dealing, so he's that, dealing with that seems speed. to make sense now to us, that the blue rock, yeah. one of the blue rocks... Lead rocks on sheet four. Uh, the leads are having a little bit of a struggle with it. And when rocks are like that, Glenn, the first thing teams have to do is identify which that, one, which one it is, and then figure out how to deal with Absolutely. it. Absolutely, you've got to figure out which one because if you don't figure out which one is the problem, then you know, both of your rocks are a problem because you don't know which absolutely. one is faster than the other. And once you figure out which one is the bad one, then he might be able to pass it off to Graham Weagle right. on a hit. Or deal with it. Or deal with At it. At least knowing yeah. what he's dealing with. We'll see now if this keeps going, if that if that trend continues. Now, I'm sure Aaron's going to figure it out, but uh, I'm sure Ryan would like him to figure it out before... A little quicker. Before it costs him. But Glenn, we got rocks in play again here now. Aaron Rod or Aaron Rodgers. Aaron felt them. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. The first one go deep. Thomas got on top of it. No, Lambswood got on top of that. So we're back in similar to two wins ago. Oh, there's a pick here too. I think. Yeah, this one was gone early. And the thing about that, you got a the teams that when that happens, see, you got a prayer kit because you got a rock, another rock to throw, and there's nothing you can do about it. And most of these players would have learned that in juniors from their coach, that stuff that you can't control, you got to park it, forget about it, and carry on because you still got a game to win. This is interesting, Mark. I don't know if, it, if I'd be playing the... Dave is... Oh, I know. I wouldn't be. I, um, I'd probably be wrong, but I wouldn't be doing this. Well, this is going to be a duff double peel. He's only going to get one here. No, no, okay. Well, you got it off the center line. Yeah, but now got, you got no draw on the intern side anymore. The entire the in that intern draw side is gone completely. So now Dave Thomas, if he's in trouble, only has the out turn to save him or some kind of run back on the opposition stone, as it stands right now, which makes it that much tougher. But Dave obviously has a plan in mind, and, and he's sticking to it. Uh, Ryan is just trying to force him to one if he can. Ryan, Ryan would be happy with a force for one. And uh, he would force one here. Ryan takes a, a one-point lead with the hammer into the second half. If you give that to any person before the game starts, every person, every skip liner would take it 100% of the time. All right, he's got uh, Ryan's McNeil Lamb. Has got he's got two sunk, so I, I think it's bail time for Dave. But it looks he, need, a bit... he needs a run back here. He got to at least get one of them. And it, the thing here, he, when you're playing these run backs, is he playing the run back mark or the double peel? I, I don't I don't maybe maybe one or the well, other. You're hitting your own know. rock, so I think you can run it back here if you can stick it. It certainly helps. Oh yeah, and. Uh, I think straight back is what he's looking for. But if he's a little on the high side, he'll get the one on the he back might, of the pin. Yeah, he might get that too. The thing here, even if he gets the one at back and rolls the shooter open, I think uh, this is a line is off here. I think uh, I think it was a little snug right Mike from the Gordon beginning. Might have got a little snug on the broom. Yeah. I think his ice was okay. But now Lambsford is going to replace the guard. You can tell the ice is finishing here, Glenn. Look where the ice is playing yeah, this guard. He's wonderful. out to the edge of the 12 foot. So he's looking at about a five foot curl, which is pretty nice. It's wonderful. It's great. Yeah, you, you, There's you, not you, a guard you can't get around. There's nowhere you can't get to. That's right. Absolutely. And with the sweepers that these teams have, uh, a lot of rocks can be made. And the ice is quick, as we've seen, somewhere in the mid 15, 5, 15, 6, yeah. 15, 7 range. It's very nice. With dead draw weight. 
The sweepers are not too fussy about the speed on this one. It looks like it's going to come a little deep. Now that that triple might be there. It man. might be, yeah. I just don't know if I don't know if the guys can. Uh, I don't think you need throw to throw uh, a, a complete heater at it. I think this is more. If you can hit that right on the nose, it could be pretty close. Mike's gone down to have a look. Would you draw to the one on the back of the one foot clamp? Do you think? Well, that was that was one option that Dave that Dave suggested. The thing only, about it, the is only downside is if you make it, he puts a cap on it. it that's your, that's you're not getting, getting. That's it. All you're going to get. That's why I, I'm. I wasn't. That's not my first instinct here. If you got the hammer. No, I agree with you. There's no threat here that yet that you won't have a chance to score one. Now they're looking at playing the intern now, past the one that they just threw. The skinny double. No, and hit the one in the top part of the forefoot and just roll flop over on in front of the back one hmm. well i think that gives them an option now it's still only mullins's second rock so there's still skips rocks to come i think i would take a crack at the double first <laughs> yeah i like your first call and if you hit it just right you you may be able to squeeze the rock at the back out of the forefoot even if you don't get it all the way out of the rings so Rock got, is, he got this one out there. Rock is underway here. I don't know if it was there, Mark. I think, I don't know if it would have been playing that weight. He just haired that yellow guard. I don't know. If, like He would have, he had, I like keeping the shooter. I like keeping the shooter. Oh, I think playing, you're playing that shot. Just board. Just hack, board. hack even. Yeah. I don't know. That was a really thin double. I that was not a percentage call, if you're asking. And I think you agree with that. Yeah, and I don't know if he could have made it because he only just got by that yellow guard, and, and he, he still went across the, the top. And he still went across the top. Right. So I don't think it was even there. Well, sometimes lining up these angles is like, is like you do a pool. And it's not just where the rock comes off that you're throwing, it's where or how do you hit the rock that you're trying to hit the stationary stone. Absolutely. So I guess Ryan is just playing a guard, fill the hole, fill in the hole, and... Uh... Well, if he fills the hole, I'm thinking then that Dave Thomas is going to have to play that raise on his own. If he plays the double on the blues, if that's available to him, I think even if he makes it, Ryan just draws around again. Yeah. So if he's trying to generate two points in the fifth here. Now this rock to me doesn't look like it got a lot of weight. And they're working on it awful hard here. It might get over. Okay, it's gonna get, okay, it's gonna get over, but it's not gonna be very deep. Oh and my gosh. They've worked that the whole sheet down. Man. But now where it is. It's interesting, he, isn't he it? He takes away the double. Yeah, on the blues. It's interesting. He, you could you throw the out turn, Mark? Boy, that's a tight hole. It is. And I think you're gonna lose the, I think you're losing your shooter, the blue one, and the back yellow one, and blue ends up lying too. I don't know if you lose the back yellow one. It goes into the other blue, doesn't I it? I like I like I think the shot here is that raise. You're probably still going to give Lambs with a shot. He's not even looking at that, I don't but think. But they haven't even looked at that. So oh, he's looking now at he's looking now. at it, yeah. If he grazes it straight back, he can be shot rock. Lambs was going to have a hell of a time getting in there. He might have to play an out wide out turn on that rock in the eight foot and, and try and bump it, it up. Well, whatever, whatever the options are, I'm glad we're up here and he's down there. Well, I wouldn't have. I, <laughs> There's Lance, nothing as easy. I don't think either one, or, <laughs> one of us is going to make this next shot. Whatever it is, is going to be a high degree of difficulty here. Should be allowed to 
once a game to throw it from the other end. I think it should be like bumper curling. <laughs> give it, give, give the old guys put the boards a back in. Yeah, and put play. the boards back in. Yeah. This is yeah. He's playing your shot, Mark. Angle raise. Uh, the game has changed a lot, Glenn. Oh, no question. No question. I remember back when McDonald's Tobacco used to sponsor the bar. They had a carton of cigarettes every 10 feet for the guys who wanted to have a smoke between yeah. shots. And they had ashtrays on the benches halfway a down the sheet. Ashtrays on the benches halfway <laughs> down. The good old days. And guys would actually slide out of the hack with a cigarette in their mouth. Can oh, yeah. You, can you imagine doing that? But that was the lifestyle back then. Yep. <laughs> well, he's trying to play that. He's got all kinds of weight here. He Mark. looked to me, Glenn, like when he let this go, he turned it. He did. Yeah. So now, again, playing that raise with full weight. I don't think, I don't think that increases the chances of trying to. You, you had to stick it completely. Yeah, I don't. I, I agree with you. I, I assumed he was going to be playing just back back that, ring. That's what I thought. Back ring, but. Uh, but now Lambs, what he's does he play? Does he cap that off? I don't know if anything's changed, has it? Not really. I got. I think if you want to be aggressive, just part and, of me saying play the outturn tap. Well. I like the outturn tap. You're in a position of you have an advantage. You're already up two. If you can come around and tap that, knock it two feet on an angle, you take away the run back from Dave. You got two rocks in the four foot. You're yeah. making him make a great shot to score one. Because he's got to play wide and have it curl enough to get a nibble on the one foot. Interesting, yeah. He plays to Garrett. Now he can play to Garrett here and you're lying one, and Dave might not have much of a shot. Yeah, so this may be, you know, he remembers he got away with one in the fourth. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he doesn't want to uh, gamble again if he doesn't have to, I guess. That's the thought. Let's just make it tough on the opponent. And This line doesn't look too bad here, Glenn. And the weight, weight looks nice. If they can just get it to stop. Well, he's got that one guard curl. weight figured out. That'll do it, I think. Well, well I think the, the raise on the yellow with quiet weight might still be there. Yeah. From the hack, he's probably covering about half, but there's enough distance between the two rocks. That was a pretty rocks. good shot, Mark. He took away a hole and the hole and, and, tap. And, and made the tap tough. Oh, Dave's got the broom over here. I don't know what he's... No, I there's don't. There's no shot on the outturn side. No. He might have to play the, the, the yellow Garrett on the left and slash it between the two blues oh, closer into moly. the back. Well, I don't. What I, else? I like. I like yours. Back, back eight foot weight. Back twelve foot weight. Make that tap. tap that. I think there's enough. There you don't have me. to be straight into the blue. You can be on the other side of the button. And you could hit it thin and come off the top blue one and roll it down into the four foot. So you got a couple of I options think that's here. His option. On line call. But he got himself into a mess here. The death by a thousand cuts. That's what this end was being like. I'm just looking over at the ladies' game over on she two, and there's about 15 rocks in the forefoot. Yeah, I'm not sure who scored. We'll see in a second now. I hope Once... somebody got more than one. <laughs> well, lots of times that's all that happens with that many oh, rocks yeah. in play. We and we've both been there. Oh my gosh! Oh, they're measuring so. Measuring for one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's more than one because the rocks are measuring are in the eight. Are in the eight. They had about right. eight rocks in the forefoot. <laughs> But anyway, we'll, get, we'll give an update now when we uh, all the teams finish the fifth end be the, at the halftime break. So David elected to go with the board oh, wave that, tap back, but now this is curling hard. That was a... That looked like it might have picked also. It, it went hard all of a sudden. It was there, then it was gone. So it looks like it's going to be a steal of one for Lambswood in our feature game. And Lambswood would take a 3 nothing lead into the break. 
Okay, folks, we're going to take a short uh, break here now. When we come back, we'll give everybody a recap on all six sheets, and we'll pick up in the sixth end with our feature game. So everybody, uh, get up, stretch your legs, go grab a beverage, and we'll see you in five minutes or so. Thank you.
Okay, folks, here we are back in the six stand action at the 2024 Newfoundland and Labrador Men's and Ladies Provincial Curling Championships. Before we get going with the action on sheet on our sheet four, our feature game between uh, Lambswood and Dave Thomas, just going to give an update on the scores for everybody out there uh, watching our live stream. Sheet one, we have a uh, three to two for Team Hancock over Team Tipple after four ends. They haven't posted the fifth end score yet, but that's a big game. They got two junior teams, and they all know each other, but they really, really want to beat the other guy. Anyway, sheet two, uh, one of our ladies' games, after four, or actually after five, it is uh, six to two for a godson over uh, Team Guju. Sheet three in her other ladies' game, it is five to three for Boland over Curtis. Our feature game is 3 0 for Lambswood over Dave Thomas. Sheet 5, it is 5 to 2 after 4 for uh, Nathan Young over Harold Walters. And sheet 6, we have 3 to 2 for Simmons over Trent Gaines after 5. Okay, folks, now we're going to bring. We, inter we talked to him and interviewed him yesterday, but we got him back again today. Carter Holden who plays lead on Team Perry, who are heading off to the under-18 Nationals in a couple of weeks. And uh, we're just going to ask him some questions now, like 20 questions today, <laughs> and ask him uh, some things about the curling and, and whatnot and try to pick his brain a bit. So, Carter, you're back now, and you can give us some insight. So just being around, even though you're not playing the tanker, just being around the tanker, what kind of things do you do you pick up? Uh, I don't know, Mark. Like, just... Hmm. It's not supposed to be a trick question. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you see all these teams play, and um, and you you really see that they're all uh, all pretty equal for the most part. You know, like uh, like the four teams we kind of talked about yesterday. Yeah, uh, Ryan McNeil Lambswood and uh, Nathan Young and Andrew Simmons, and then uh, Greg Smith who isn't playing this draw. So you kind of see that they're all pretty equal. So I think. You know, it's going to be a close battle between those those four teams this weekend. Okay. Because, like you said, as we said yesterday even, um, it comes down a lot of times in one game to one call or one shot turns a game around. Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, you've played against a lot of these teams in the last year or so with your junior team. Yep. And have had a, a level of success against some and not so much against others. So what kind of things do you feel personally that you've learned yourself? Oh, I mean, a lot. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just like uh, like Glenn says to us all the time, if it takes two hours, it takes two hours. Just, you know, being patient and, uh, you know, taking the opportunity when we get it for sure. Yeah, well, the biggest thing I used to tell my junior girls team I used to coach is the five-letter word that can ruin a lot of curling games could call greed. <laughs> you don't always have to go for the big shot, like you said. If it takes yeah. two hours to beat somebody, it yeah. takes two hours. That's Absolutely. And that's – you got to be patient. That's a – it's a virtue in curling for sure, but um, you guys got a bright future, and you know, so you're you're heading to the under 18s, but you're also playing in the provincials under 21s, correct? Yes, yeah. So that's the same team, or you have a different lineup for that? Uh, so we have a different lineup <laughs> for that one. So for the lineup for U 21s, it's uh, Braden Snow is the lead, and then uh, Sean O'Leary is second, uh, Nick Codner is third, and then Simon Ferry skip. Okay. Yeah. So on that squad, you're you're fifth. Yeah. Okay. But now this is Sean O'Leary. He's the he's over age for under eighteen. Correct. Yeah. But he is his last year in junior, I believe. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So next year it'll be this under eighteen. This year will yep. be the under twenty one team. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because Sean O'Leary is quite a good player, actually. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I I think he's one of our better juniors. He can hit really well. Well, that's not true. All you guys can hit really yeah. well, and it's not just your team. The other Tipple and Hancock can all hit really well, also. That's why we have a. We used to always say when we grew up, you're only as good as your competition. The better yeah. those guys get, the better you get. Yeah. So for sure. and that's that's the reason teams travel. Yep. Because here we only get limited competition, so you have to get to the mainland. And I know you guys, tell us about the couple of spiels you've played in the way this year. Yeah, so in November, I think it was the beginning of November, 
uh, we played in the Lakeshore Cash Spiel. So we got to face uh, new teams, well, new teams to me, and then uh, the team last year played a couple of these teams. But the one new team that uh, we got to play was the mixed team that went to Youth Olympics. Okay. So they played in that Spiel, and we actually bet them in the final to win the, the Spiel. Okay. And, uh, and then following that month, uh, we played at uh, Cornwall, and uh, we played a couple of different teams there as well. And uh, we played probably the best team for U21 in uh, Atlanta, Canada, which is, uh, what is their name again? Hold on. Uh, yeah, Kale McCosick. And uh, again, it came down to the last rock and uh, the eighth end for that spiel, and then we lost on last rock. So, Well, that's where you go, because you, if you get, when you get to your nationals and you see some of these same teams, you have already played them, so they're not on a pedestal anymore. You know you can beat them. Yep. And the ice they play on is the same width and same length as you what play here. Yeah, yeah. And they get out of bed the same way, put their shoes and socks on the same yeah. way, and it's all the same. Yeah. When you don't travel, you, the first time you go away to a national, you see these teams, and you see, and right away you say, man, those guys look awful good. Yeah. But when you've played them a couple of times, you realize they're no better than you yeah, guys. Yeah, so our team last year, uh, we played Mikazik a couple of times, and it was always – Either we won or they won. It was kind of back and forth. So I'm assuming it's going to be the same way this year if we play them. If assuming we make it to U18 or U21 nationals, because they won't be in U18 nationals. Well, Carter, it might not only be that way this year. Yeah. It could be that way when you're playing them in senior men's curling yeah. in 40 years time. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah. that's how it works because you're all the same age. So you're going to come up through the men's ranks the same time. Yep. And that's how that that's that's how that works. Our other commentator, Glenn Goss, who's just taking a break there right now, he'll tell you exactly the same thing. Yeah. And I do believe he's also your coach, correct? Yes, yeah. Right on. Okay, so well have a great trip to the under eighteens. Good luck in the under twenty ones. Thank you. And uh, I'm sure we'll be talking to you again because you got a, you all you guys got a pretty bright future. Thanks, Mark. Okay, we're back to the 16 action on ice four here. We're down to Skip's Rocks. We just had a little talk with Carter Holden, one of our bright young juniors, heading out to the under-18 nationals in a couple of weeks. And now we have Lambswood, first rock. He's throwing in the sixth end. Looks like he's just hitting the lie two here. And he'd be quite happy with a force here for uh, Dave Thomas. Yeah, Mark, I think, um, I think uh, Ryan... McNeil Lambswood, uh, he's not going to gamble anymore. He gambled. He got. He almost got caught in the fourth. He got away with it. He got away with one in the fifth. He's not going to. He's not going to go to the well anymore if he doesn't have to. Well, then you and I both know three point lead after five is complete control. It should be control. So I agree. He. I don't it's, suspect he'll be gambling. He play for the force. Play for the force. And now I, I don't like it when teams go all in defensive mode because sometimes the situation calls for an offensive shot but it's in a defensive situation. Right. And you got to see how the rocks line up and what the angles are. But I, I, I do agree. I don't see him going all in all anymore. In. I don't, Not unless I don't. the game changes dramatically in the next two or three ends. Yeah, and, you know, if, if Dave picks up a, a, a steal, if, assuming he gets one here and he steals one somewhere, along, somewhere else along the line, you might see Ryan get a little bit more aggressive, try to get that three-point lead back. But uh, I agree with you. Three-point lead in a game like this, and it's all ones. There's been, there's been like uh, while we've had a lot of rocks in play, there's been limited opportunities for score for for more than well, more than one scores. Well, there's been two ends where it could have been multiple. Ryan Lambsworth had a tough, tough draw for two, but the bigger thing was Dave Thomas had that shot for potentially three or four. He did. And, and Ryan remembers that, so he doesn't want to go there again. And never came up enough. So Dave Thomas did get the situation he needed. Just quite couldn't pull the trigger. And he's playing a, playing a freeze here. Looks like it's going to be a little short of shot rock, but it looks like he might be in for second. He'll give something yeah, for Lambs. I think so. Give Lambs with something to think about. Now, Glenn, he's going to play the pick here by the looks of it. A lot of teams here would just split the rings and say, okay, take your two, take yeah. your one. Or take a run at some sort of strange because double the, and give the a only way speed. right now that Dave Thomas is going to have a crack at two is by Lambswood playing on his Thomas Rock. Make it for him. And if it hits, if he, if he jams it at all on the, his own rock, 
behind the, the, the yellow, it could spill over onto the rock on the other side of the eight foot and still not get out. This is not simple. So it's, it's great if you make it, it the force is on, but... Uh, I don't think he's throwing hack weight. No, he's, uh, it's coming down. I say that this is all of an eight or an eight and a half second. Sweepers weren't worried about it, so he, it must be pretty close. Very good. And well make, done. Makes the pick clean, and so he's lying too. Dave Thomas has the draw for one. Mark, that's a, a strength of, of, of one of the strengths of this team, and, and a lot of the younger teams. Nathan Young, the same way. Um, um, Greg Smith, the same way. They've got, they're, they're able to throw that big up weight. Accurately. And control it. Yeah, yeah. accurately. And it's hard when you get down two or three points against any of those teams. It's hard to crawl back in it. You got to, as we call it, bob and weave your way back. Bob and weave. Try to get it. Try to get the angles going in your favor, and, and get a break. And get a. And you're going. If you're down, you got to get a break somewhere. Don't matter how well you play. If the other team is playing ninety percent, you're only playing seventy, and you're down three. You're going to have something's got to change. Something's got to change. Not going to change right. on his own. Yeah, agreed. So Dave is drawn for his one. He doesn't have much of a choice. So. We'll see what happens here. I'll be shocked if he doesn't make it because this is a, a real strength. It's coming in. Looks the weight looks pretty good here. He looks like T line and it's going to be into the four foot somewhere. So yep. one and six down for Dave Thomas. So three to one after six. Brian Lambswood, Ryan McNeil Lambswood over Dave Thomas from Port Basque. I think ready to get the uh, shot rock get get last rock back in his own hands. So. Uh, that force was, he's happy with the force. Get four ends left with a two point lead and hammer. Not a bad deal. So Dave has got to make something happen here. Uh, he either gets back in the game or, oh, well, or he doesn't. <laughs> I can't imagine you're going to waste, you're going to have to throw guards and, uh, and make it tough on uh, McNeil Lambswood. If you want to get back in the game, so we'll see. So Dave is going to try, he's calling for a, a guard in the three zone, which is two, three, four feet in front of the rings. And what that'll allow him to do is then throw one in just over the hog line, uh, regardless where where uh, McNeil Lambswood throws his stone. Dave will throw one just over the center line, over the uh, hog line, and try to keep the separation so the double peel is more difficult. But this one is stuck right in the two, and that makes it more difficult uh, to get separation. So Ryan predictably is going in. I would expect Dave to throw another guard, but uh, he's fooled me a couple of times today, so we'll see. And I was just, uh, while Carter was having a chat with Mark, I was just uh, watching a couple of the games, and Harold Walters had a, a draw to the eight foot uh, for a three-ender to tie the game, and he came up short of the rings. So uh, that was a surprise because that's a Harold is like Dave Thomas. The strength of his is the soft touch. He's really good at it, and uh, that was a big miss for Harold. So that's but by the way, the score is five four for uh, for Nathan Young after five, and he has last rock. Now this is interesting. That's the last place that Lambs would wanted that rock to go, foot short of the rings, directly behind the other one. That's a double guard that uh, Mark was talking about yesterday and earlier today. It allows, if Dave can sneak one in behind here, it's going to be difficult to get at it without making some sort of a double run back. Um, but there's no shortage of weight on this one. But he still can't run the guards off, and it's touching the center line, so he can't even tick it because that's the. He's got no alternative but to try to draw again. So this could get messy.
And you know, going back to what we said a little earlier about Aaron Feltham's, that first rock, he just seems to be struggling with the speed of that first rock. And I have a feeling that might be a little bit heavier than than his uh, his second one. And he's having a difficult time adjusting. This one's a lot better. So he's getting a handle on it, but uh, it's, just, it's it's tough. I, I you know... Um, I can only, the game is really hard anyway, but then when you give, somebody gives you two rocks and they're different, it's hard to, it's hard to make two shots in a row. Devin Ryan is trying to get to the face of this, but I don't like the line on this one. Oops. So Ryan's got a decision to make here. Well, he's going to try to score multiple points. He could walk up and try to rip off the guards. But his instinct right now is telling him this is an opportunity to score two or more. So why not? I think if this was a ninth end, he'd probably be ripping the guards off. But with four ends left to play, he feels that maybe the two-point lead is not enough yet. It's another one that's got seems to have plenty of line. It's got to. It's got a curled ton. I don't know if Graham got out or was too much ice uh maybe a little a bit of both because that's not that's a full foot away from being on the line that he wanted it to be now it gives dave an opportunity to shorten up the rings on mcneil lambswood so um dave is going to dave would really like to steal here like a force you know i guess that's the lesser of two evils i suppose but a force means he's still down by three after seven he would dearly love to steal a point here That's not going to help. I don't know if that was turned in by Devin or underthrown, but either way, it, uh, it hit a guard that really should not have been in play. So Lambswood has an opportunity to hit a rock at the back of the eight-foot line. Four. Now, I don't know if you'd play that right now. Because Dave doesn't, right, I think Dave is all in. He's either going to try to get back in the game. If he gives up four or five or six, who cares? You know, it's only one loss. I don't think, I don't know if I'd be playing this right now. But, uh... Dave Thomas has fooled me a couple of times today when I thought he might do one thing and he's decided to do another. So this one is really curling too. Going to sneak by. Oh, that is some good sweeping. Wow. Well, Dave is still going to play. Uh, still going to play hit and roll. He's got to stay for shot, or otherwise Lamb was, Lambswood might just go up and rip off the guard. Then you've got nothing to work with. This has to curl. He may just rip off the guard here now. Oh, maybe not.
Well, I guess he's decided to uh, stay on the attack. Uh, so he's called a top four foot. The only issue I have with this is if you make it top four and he freezes you, it negates the other two you've got in the rings. I think I would have played the peel and have it missed by now. The line looks pretty good. I don't know about the depth, but the line looks pretty good. You don't want to go too far. Okay. He's lying three. He might force Dave into, yeah, into trying to get in around all of it. I don't know. I think in this situation, you're. I think you're all in. I think I might be drawing here. Well, that doesn't help you. I think McNeil Lambs was going to go where I thought Dave should have went. Um, if he makes this, uh, Thomas is in tough. But if ifs and buts were cherries and nuts, be Christmas every day of the week, wouldn't it? You've got to make this one. You, you can't be short here. It'll give Dave something to go around. And they are working this one. Oops. Oh, if I were Dave, I'd be looping around that so quick. I'd be drawing here, I think. That hit and roll is always going to be there for your last one. However, if he makes it, Mark, he's, well, he's I think, golden. I think the uh, you and I both agree, I think we'd, we'd be playing the intern draw. I think so because you had a better chance of placing the rock exactly where you need it. But the roll works if you can make it, but he got to get in behind. He can't let Ryan have access to a hit. Like that one that came up short of Daniel Bruce, That was that's a guard that works in Dave Thomas's favor, and I, I'd be using it. Now I'm right behind the sheet. It looked like he got that one going a little tiny bit again. He's had a couple of those outturns. I think he just rolls them ever so slightly. Oh, he's going through the hole. That's another oops. Well, well, I guess there's one consolation, Mark, is uh, the hit and roll is still there. <laughs> it is, but uh, depending where Ryan puts this, that roll might be... It might not matter. Yeah. Too far back in the forefoot. If it was a foot higher, that blue rock, he can roll to the pin, but now he's rolling to the back of the pin or, or farther back in the Or forward. farther back again, yeah. So depending where Lambs would put this drive, he puts this on, on the front half of the one foot, I don't think that roll is any good. I agree with you. This could really put a lot of pressure on uh, Dave Thomas. Well, to make something special with his last one, if 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 uh, Ryan can get this to the top of the button, well, undercover. Uh, they they I had like the hammer, Glenn. So right now, if he puts this around to the four foot, he's looking at a three spot. He is looking at a possible three. And right now, with score three to one, we're playing seven, uh, two or three in their hair. The game is starting to get out of reach for Dave Thomas. Especially the way it's been going. Um, 
There's only there was only one opportunity earlier that Dave had for a multiple score. This rock looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Oh, well, the big thing that does is stops Dave Thomas draw and forces him over to the hit and roll again. But he can roll in for shot Rockland, but he's got to make a pistol. Now that draw, uh, we timed it at 16. Wow. 16 1. So ice was even wow, quickened up a quick. little bit. That's pretty fast. You pretty much just got to fall out of the hack. Downhill. And with good sweepers, you can drag that and put it wherever you want. It's wonderful. It's it, it's fast and it's holding up. It's yeah. the only wonderful downs, conditions. The only downside when ice is that fast is trying to get a long guard. Yeah. Uh, and and it's sometimes it's difficult to feel. I remember one yeah. time playing on ice like that with Randy Perry, my longtime third, who was a, 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 had a toe slide. And he said if he went any slower, he wouldn't leave the hack. Yeah. He's a little closer on the line here, Mark, I think. Oh, that's that's close. Well, I think he's rolled in for shot rock, albeit it is exposed partially to Ryan Lambswood. Mark, your vantage point is a little better than mine. You're right behind the hack. Is yeah. it is it like an edge on edge type of thing? Uh, pretty close. You can probably see 80% of okay. it, 85%. Not quite edge on edge, but not far off. So it's a hack Again, of board weight hit for three? Well, he... He could hit and roll out, and he's going to score two. And, you know, he's already up two, so just to make sure you get your deuce here, puts him up uh, five to one. So the thing here, I don't think you need to play it so tight to the guard that you bring the guard into play. Once you get a piece of that rock, I'd, I'd have the sweepers down with the brooms. Make sure you get your two. And, you know, a four-point lead after seven with these guys, a lot's going to have to go wrong for them not to Agreed. not to win that game in this situation. Like Dave Thomas are really going to have to push hard to make something happen. And even then, they might have to get a couple of breaks or a couple of misses out of the Lambs who would force them. They're well, working. They seem They're working to like on it. This. That line's getting pretty tight. They seem to like it. It's the first multiple score. Oh, he lost it. Oh. They hit the guard. Trying to get too... Glenn, I alluded to it. Trying to get too cute. Trying to just get by the guard yeah. and stay there. Make sure you get your two. Wow. They're looking at... It could be a steal one, which changes this game completely. They're I, not measuring. I think they said he moved it just far enough. But we'll, so or we'll not said, but indicated. Now. Wow. Even if it was only one for Lambswood. Uh, there was no reason to be off it, that it one. It still keeps Thomas in the game. They come back with a deuce and eight is only a one-point game. Wow. It looks like Aaron Feltham is lining up in the hack, so it looks like Lambswood scored one. Oh. To take a 4-1 lead. Yes, that's right. They got to post it. Four to one after seven. Man. That rock was made. Yeah, they took the brooms up. They did. And then it was too late when they put him down, he ticked. Yeah. Again. He was lucky to rub it on the way by, otherwise it was a steal. That would have been something. Well, I when we had uh, Carter Holden and I, I was talking to him about the five-letter word that screwed up many a good, a good end. Greed. Oh, absolutely. And just take what you got in front of you. Yeah. And at this point in the game, Two puts control completely in teams Lamb, Lambswood's hands. It does. Now, scoring one, they still have control. But a deuce with Thomas in the eighth end, it's a one-point game. He yeah. wins the goal. Thomas still has life. And there's still five rock rule, no tick on the center line. So there's still opportunities for a team with a one that's only down one to, get, to generate some offense. Yeah, that was... Uh... I don't know if it picked or something, Mark, or I don't know, but it's... It looked uh, to me like the line was tight from the hog in. They should have just been sweeping it, it anyway. It did look that way, but they seemed to be a little bit shocked when it did but, rub the guard. So, but, Glenn, we've seen it all, all game. There was no that, reason uh, that to... That outturn on that side, there's tons of curl. For, and it's all from the hog line in. There was no reason not to sweep it. He had at least half the rock made with a with a bumper weight. He was staying. So He had know, it made. Had he didn't it made. need to get to the nose. Anyway, either way... They got unlucky and lucky at the same time. Scored one, three-point lead after seven, and Dave is all in here now. Well, he has been for a while, I guess. Did you say, did you follow him up? Did you feel that a little bit 
Now this is um, oh he got his first one in the ring so maybe maybe he threw the second rock first because he struggled. Aaron has struggled with um, draw weight, no draw weight, but with yeah. the speed of the two stones. But we've 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 talked about this uh, a fair bit this game, plan, and we think there's one, the rocks aren't matched up properly. I've got to assume that. And I, I think I heard that a couple of games ago. One of the teams said the the lead rocks that were assigned number one and number two, blue and sheet four, weren't perfectly matched. But now he seems he's made two draws here, so maybe he got to figure it out. Maybe he's got to figure it out, yeah. And you know, if one's a little five feet, six, seven feet heavier or lighter, or one, but, I don't think it's a cutter. I think it's the speed. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree, and I, I think he's also realized that with with right now, heavy is better than light. Uh, a guard works for the other guy. It doesn't matter what color. So heavy is better than light. Oh, this one's gone sideways. Now that picked going across the guard. As we would say sometimes, just a little inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no handle on it either. That's just drifting. Well, when you don't have a handle, it it just starts, rocks tend to go. It could take the other handle. It just drifts. Or yeah. it could just go hard, whichever way it was supposed to go. But you've got to believe that hit something as well, flat spot or something. So I guess they're just playing a tight guard on this. He doesn't need too many rocks out front. Anything tight is okay. But again, this rock is only going to be halfway. Yeah, and they got to go to make this tight. And I that's... think he would have liked it in a bit tighter. Now he Graham has struggled with his weight a little bit he, this game he too. Has, he's been yeah. long and short. Long. He's been close and everything, but it's just a little bit too long, a little bit too short, and back and forth. This is the kind of stuff that. Dave needs in order to get himself back in the game. He needs rocks in front of the rings. He doesn't care what color they are. Trying to get through the hole here. He's close. Really close. Whoa, well done. That's a nice shot. Well done. You got a good result. Got a shooter behind the corner. Got something going now. Rearranged the two blues. Again, this all happened because that guard was short. Yeah. And, and never really covered uh, Lambswood's two rocks in the eight-foot. Well, he's going out to peel now, as he should. I like hitting your own here. Oh, I do. Into I, the yellow. I do, too. And if you hit it too full, you get the rock behind it. Yeah. And you can open up the whole front. But they're just going to take the one here. So he might like to keep that center rock. I don't know why, because he's up three. But uh, we'll see how it works out here. Now, the thing about the yellow, that could come off the other yellow and roll in. Well, he was working on us. Oh, he was. So that's why I never. another reason why I never liked just the straight yellow. But Dave Thomas got some life here again. He does. And he doesn't need to make the double here. He just, I like just tapping the back to the back of the four foot, back of the eight foot. Try to get in front of it. Maybe you could flip behind uh, the long guard, but just push that back. Something that, that you know you can hopefully get a jam on or whatever later in the end. Has you got you got to pull out all the stops. You're down. You're down three. Has he indicated a, a weight mark or is it full a... weight hit? Oh, okay. That's. So, and the line here is... That's all over the guard. Uh, looked to me like he was straight tight and then might have got it going a bit. So, he might miss the guard and oh. take his own out and roll in front of the other one. Perfect breeze. Perfect. <laughs> Sometimes Perfect good things breeze. come in small packages. Holy moly. And not what he was looking for, but the result he got is not the end of the world. It looks, Mark, there's a there's a spot outside that hog line at the far end. We've seen a bunch of rocks go sideways down there. They might have knee prints or hand prints that have flattened out uh, patches of ice. And 
That happened in our game yesterday too, Glenn. It did, yeah. So it, it could very easily be that. We've we've both seen that in our careers, and it it can uh, it can play havoc. That wasn't what they were looking for. Again, advantage moves back again. Again, Dave Thomas still has something to work with. Oh, man. man. Neither team has been totally sharp in this game. There's been opportunities handed back and forth. Absolutely. Just when you think you've got control, you don't. Well, we always say it's a game of opportunities, but you don't expect to get 15 of them. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you but can't again, carry them over to the next game, so. Well, I've done a couple of the Lambs games, and the games I've done before the, the, this afternoon's game, they played extremely well. So, again, you get uh, it's a, struggle a game here, where though. you're not, not quite as sharp, and uh, it is what it is. And I'm wondering if, the, if, if they don't have some flat spots and it's getting, every, if getting in the players' heads, you know? And Well, that does happen. It, and it can. Yeah, and you, it, as we, we've been there, and you tend to overthink it. You, you can certainly overthink it. Then, you'd get, then you don't have confidence in your own ability to figure out where to put the broom, and it just leaks into the rest of the team, and it, it's tough. But Dave's got to get back in the game here. He's got an opportunity. All you want is a chance. But if he can get down and get uh, Mike now to get a freeze slightly on the outside of that blue one, so it's not accessible by the yellow blue run back. Or cross it. Or cross it. Could he cross that, it? That would be even better, but he's got a lot of liner and it looks a little bit strong. Yeah, it looks a little heavy. Now, at this point, More... in the, at this point in the game, Glenn, these players should have draw weight figured out. Seriously. Yeah, that's, uh, like that's, that's, a, that's, that's a hard miss. That's, that's, a tough a hard, miss. that's a hard miss. It's not going to help the Dave Thomas situation here at all. Well, Lambswood is for going to peel on the... He's changed his mind again. So, up three, I I, I don't think you need to come in. I think I'd, I'd peel the guard. Yeah, the... You know, maybe the ice has got them second guessing themselves i don't know it's just the flip-flop back and forth between yeah. it looks like it's going to be pretty close to what he's looking for they're working on it, trying to get it in for third shot and they got that done i think dave got to do something with those middle ones because his Right now, all they got is that intern freeze, and that might be accessible with one of the, the promotions on, on this blue rock for Lambswood later in the end. So I think you got to just rearrange the angles a bit. I think he can come down on the out turn, back four foot weight, the one that was just thrown, if he can nose that and just move them off. Take the freeze off. Take the, take the freeze off and just spill them a little tiny bit. It changes the angles. Makes it more accessible. All of a sudden, Dave Thomas has two ways to get in there. Throwing lots of weight here again. They don't throw down weight very much. They, it's full weight when you can get away with a, a quiet weight. And they've had a number of shots. They've played hits this game where they played full weight full and rolled, weight, yeah. rolled out or rolled the wrong way. Where it might have been better served if they played a board. You, you, you'd like to keep your shooter in, in the rings. You have to keep your shooter in you the rings. You have to keep your shooter. When you're down three, you can't afford to let, let your shooter roll out. When we used to coach uh, juniors, tell juniors when you're down three, you're not allowed to play takeouts. Yeah, that's right. So just trying to get rocks and play to give yourself a chance. Well, this it, it frees up the it frees up the yellow one now for Lambswood to to nose it. You can just nose it, nothing to jam on, and. It's one of these games, Mark, if uh, McNeil Lambswood is lucky enough to pull this one out, you go in and you go, whew, 
Well, I think if he wins this game, he's through to, I, I think he'll be through to the playoffs at six and one. Now, if you notice that shot, Glenn. The, the speed. speed. It's back line weight. Yeah. Okay. He d never needed to pound it. It was more critical. Push it back and keep the shooter right there. Dave Thomas has a hard time getting in the score now. And he, he's looking for two. So he's going to be hard pressed. Well, he's going to have to get a miss. He's going to, he's probably going to have to play a double here and hope he gets a hit and roll out. Well, or a jam I, or something. I, well, I think he can play the wide out turn around the shot that Lambs would just played. I think there's enough curl. If you can get around that, you can be buried by the time you get to the T-line or back of the forefoot. But and then again, you get Ryan the same shot he just played. Well, again, you're down three, and that's the situation you yeah. got. If you, That's what you leave, and that's what you leave him. Yeah. I, don't know, where, I don't know where else he's going to go. He's playing the double. Um, maybe hoping that maybe hoping that Lambswood noses it, which will give him an open hit on the back one for two. But but if he noses this mark, I, I think blue is still shot at the back, aren't they? It looks like the line's a little generous here now. I don't know if he's going to keep the shooter at all. He might make the double. He, shooter needs to hang on to have a chance. Again, Glenn, a lot of weight and couldn't hold the shooter, which yeah. was the, probably the most critical part of the shot. So Lambswood now has an open takeout. He doesn't care if he stays. If he can stay, he's going to force Dave Thomas to one. If he rolls out, Dave Thomas is probably going to take the blank. So either way, Lamb well, will happy either way. He'll be up three without or two with, playing, playing nine. So the situation of not not being able to get quite enough pressure on on your opposition here when you've had you've had a couple of chances. You've to had do, the opportunity, uh, just overthrown a couple, I think. But that's coming from a senior who can't overthrow it. He can't throw it hard enough anymore. <laughs> yeah, we're both there too. <laughs> well, he's using his sweepers. Not sure they're going to hold us. They might. Nope. Okay, well, I'm thinking Dave Thomas needs to that was snug too, Mark. Yeah. That, uh... I think he's going to, I think he need, down three, I think you need to blank and try to get your two and nine and then steal 10, 11 or steal two and 10 or whatever. I think if you get one here, you need to, then you're going to have to steal the game. You got to steal, then you got to steal, steal three. three, three, then you got to steal three points. And sometimes when you're in a situation for two, one rack, how it hands out, you might have a crack at three, but yeah, I think right. even now the other team is going to be banging everything in sight, you would think, in the ninth end, Lambswood. I don't think they're going to fool around. But we said that last end. Yeah. And he and left, Dave had a chance. Couple of times he left, left guards up and whatever, and so you don't know. Trying to cross it now. He makes the perfect roll, but I don't. I think he wanted to take the blank. Yeah. So after eight in our feature game, it is four to two for Lambswood over Thomas. Again, the game is still close. There's only two points, but uh, Dave Thomas looks to be running out of ends here to get something mounted. But his opponents have been giving him chances. Um, I, I can't imagine that uh, McNeil Lambswood is going to play this one. Uh, with a lot of rocks in play. I wouldn't think. But well, you never I've been know. Saying that, I, I I've been saying that, that for four ends, yeah. and that hasn't been the case. Yeah. I wouldn't think either, Glenn, but you don't know. And again, if they've got a, a, a squirrely patch of ice, uh, that can make it interesting too, because we've seen some rocks go sideways that were probably not badly thrown. So we'll see now. We'll get uh, 
we got one. We'll, get, we'll probably do a little uh, cross the ace update now in a second. We'll wait now till everybody updates after the uh, eighth end, and we'll we'll give a little update for everybody. Oh, that's not what the doctor ordered there. No. Again, trying to be so precise, and even though the ice is really quick, just pulling the string a little bit. And you got to remember, to come up light, and you got two good strong sweepers just hammering it. You you really have to pull the string because yeah. they can probably take it twelve to fifteen feet. So to come up short of the hog line is a. Uh, that's our second hog rock of the day, and that's uh, like you say, Mark, on ice. That's that the, fast, that's quick, yeah. and and the players being as as good as they are. Yep. It's a real miscalculation in terms of I guess you squeeze the handle a little bit when you're coming out and you extend and you got nothing left nothing worse than curling when you're fully extended you're at the hog line you know you're light and you gotta let it and go and you're stopped and you gotta let it go <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and Ryan as we thought he doesn't want any guards in play he just throws it into the rings see if he can get a, a bonus point somewhere well what, what, what that tells me he He's going to throw it in the rings, and all the peels are going to be in turn. In turn's going the other way. Going the other way. And that yes. side seems a little straighter. So it should be easier to peel. So he made that decision. He probably figured that out. Said, we'll play here. Our, our peels are going to be on the in turn side going, going this way. No, I, I, I wouldn't be doing this either, Mark. Draw down to your own. I, no, I wouldn't come around. This is what Dave, Dave wants. That's what Dave wants, and absolutely. I wouldn't draw the other side. I'd draw down to your draw own. Draw to your own. Yep. Actually, you don't even need two rocks out there. You can throw it you through. You can throw it through if you want. That's right. Or play it. Play it. Well, you can't even tick it. It's on the center line. Right. So okay, you so throw it through or draw to your own. This is going to be pretty tight to that yellow rock, and they, they can't afford to touch it off the line. So we're sweeping just to get, okay. I think he's just going to get oh, by. He sneaks it fast. Okay. And again, there's that short of the rings again. Like the last place that you would want it. That's that first rock that, that Aaron's been yeah. throwing. He's struggled he's with it. He says, all the more reason, Mark, to throw through the rings. All the more reason to throw through the rings. Yeah, absolutely. He's, uh, through no fault of his own, he's got those two rocks to deal with. And he's just, it's been a, a tough afternoon for the young man. It guy. has. Anyway, a quick update across the board here. Sheet one, five three for Hancock over Tipple after seven. Uh, final score, nice two. Brooke Gosland, uh, eight to three over Haley Guju. Uh, ice three, um, all tied up. Curtis and Boland after eight. Uh, our game is uh, four to two after eight for Lambswood over uh, Thomas. Sheet five, all tied up, 6-6 six, six after seven between Harold Walters and Nathan Young. Big game there, a lot riding on the line. And sheet six, uh, five to two for Simmons after eight, another big game. Mark, I was, uh, I was looking at uh, the, the game on sheet five, just glancing over, and uh, Harold Walters had a draw for three and five uh, and missed it, and had a draw for three and seven, and missed it. Well, that tells you all you need to know. You he gotta could, make, gotta he make could be up too. Got to, um, got to make those free points. So they must be having a good game. They are. I think uh, is Nathan Young still undefeated? No, he, no. He's three and one or four. They and lost one. to McNeil Lambswood last night. I right, think. right. So okay. nobody's undefeated. So they don't want to drop a second game in a row. Uh, oh my! Trying oh my. to stay ahead of the pack. And we just saw our second hog rock of this end. Maybe the ice is starting to tighten up a bit, Glenn. Uh, it may be, but you would think at this level they We might need to get another another uh, time here to see if the ice has changed somewhat. This is It's crucial that you have your teammates with their stopwatches out, making sure that the ice is not changing, or if it is changing, what, it, what the change is. Uh, but you're right, that's the second hog rock in this end.
McNeil's Lamb was it's trying to get he's gonna be close. Gonna be close. Now well, he shoves it in the rings. Good okay. shot. That was better than being a guard. Yeah, it's a good shot. But it's still it's it, still it's a guard. A, it's still a guard from Dave Thomas's point of view because you can still get around on both turns. So he needs to throw another guard. He you're not gonna steal without guards. We're very rare. Oh, not likely. Glenn, can you tell me in the ladies, if it were a four team double, if a team goes undefeated, do they, is there a playoff? No, I think that's the end of it. Okay, so yeah. on sheet three, we have a tie game after eight. Stady, Stacy Curtis is undefeated right now. It's the only undefeated team trying to stay undefeated. Yeah, so this is a huge game. So that's for a them. huge game there for, uh, for all of them, I guess. For all of them. Curtis trying to stay undefeated, and Sarah Boland trying to take the undefeated status off to ensure there's a final. So I think well, Lamb, Lambs was just going to play a hit here. Yeah, it's all in the rings now as far as he's concerned, so. I think you can kill two of them and roll your shooter off. I think it's worth trying. Open up the whole sheet. That would be ideal. I think he's playing just the one. Again. Yeah, just the one. Okay. Now if Dave Thomas throws a guard up. You got three rocks you can jam it on. Yeah. So it just, you're not helping yourself. I think the angle was if you hit it, if you hit it full on the other turn, that goes down below the one on the left hand side. It comes out the second one and goes low. Yeah. And I think you can kill all of them. And then the only rock left is the one where Dave Thomas has his broom. And then he got to put a guard up and you, know, you can. You're peeling that into it side away with nothing to jam on. I think the call mark here is for Mike Mullins to go around that rock at the top of the 12. I think I, that's I, what I, they settled on. I think it's too early. I think he needs a guard. But we'll see how it pans out. It's got a lot of curling to do. But it's coming, coming well, out. We have no, seen a good finish there. there now. We have and seen they're sweeping a good finish. Need, Very nice. Need to take it right to the back of the four if they got to. That's a good draw by by uh, by Mullins here. And now Glenn, that that shot was fourteen nine. So the ice has tightened it has up. Has tightened up half a second, which is half a second probably translates into about five to eight feet range. Five seven five to seven feet. Lamswood coming back with the run back here. And, That's a good result. And a good shot there. Rolls it off the center line too, so. Well, you can try to draw in here. I, I don't mind if he puts a guard just across the center about four feet out. Makes it hard to peel. If he peels, you got to get a jam, and then you've got a chance to light two. And if he peels it, you go around this one with your last one. And if he peels it, you go around this one in your last one. You come around now. Even gonna, if he doesn't make the run back, which he'll probably play, if you, if you make this draw good. You give him an open hit to, to, to score. You give him an open hit to score, and it's, you know. But, you know what? You're trying to scramble. To each his own, and, and Dave, Dave is call. I think he's calling for the come around. A lot of players would play the come around. It's just how, you know, different people have different experiences yeah, right. and different how, strokes, they, how yeah. they feel it, it's best for them. Like you said, the two options here are a guard or come around that rock in the 12 foot that they're looking at there now. So that's the two options you got. So you got to pick one of them. And maybe he feels if you can get around and, and Lambert doesn't make doesn't make the run back, you I got think, a chance to lie too. I and think then, I'd be saving And then hope this for one, a break that you don't roll into the middle or roll the wrong way.
Well, he's got to make this one, Mark, to give himself a chance. If he doesn't get around here, uh, you're going to, we're not going to be far off handshakes, I don't think, in this, in this game. Starting to come hard. If they can hold the line here, Glenn, he might have a good rock. Looks pretty good from here. They gotta get. They gotta get it covered. They gotta. They gotta bend a bit more. Okay. Split oh, on that. It was fifteen one. So it has tightened up somewhat. Yeah, and they swept that from, and from start to finish. Bit. So it has tightened up a little bit. Before we were getting fifteen six, fifteen seven. We have one at sixteen one, I believe. So now it's fifteen one. It's still pretty good, though, isn't it? It's not well. You get, when you're in the hack here, you know, you're playing an open hit, but that blue rock is still in your line of sight. Oh, absolutely. And you know you just can't get a little twist. If anything, you can pop it a bit and hit and roll out, which is fine. You, and again, this is a shot. You don't need to sweep it so tight to the line that you bring the guard into play. Hit and roll out is perfectly fine. If you can hit and roll to the other side to four foot, it's ideal. Ideal. But again, these guys do hit very well. His line looks pretty close yeah, here. He's going to roll out. Yep. And that's fine. You don't need to play down weight and to be fooling with anything other than a regular hit. Just throw it pretty straight, and you should be fine. So Dave Thomas has taken the same ice he took last time, so he liked his line. I guess he just needs to throw it two or three feet farther. Back eight foot even. But you got to get it sunk. Well, they're working this one right from start to finish again. Uh, that looks like it doesn't have quite have the same legs as the last one. But they're dragging it pretty close. they got to get it by. Yeah, just a little bit short. And that might be... Now, if he's... If Lambswood is lying one here, lying two, it's a draw for three. Yeah. He's lying two, I think. Blue is so lying draw, two. Draw for three. And I think uh, if he puts this in for a third point, I think the jig is up for Dave Thomas. Because that'll, that'll be a five-point lead with one end to go. Even if you don't make it, it's going to be a four-point lead. Yeah. So you don't see many four-enders in the 10th end. Well, in this game, we haven't seen any two-enders. This is the first one. Well, this will be the first one of a, of a multiple score. There have been two opportunities. There have been. Albeit the shots were tough. So it has been a fairly closely played game, but there have been a number of opportunities passed back and forth. I'd like to keep this out in the good in the good ice. He doesn't have any extra weight on it, Glenn. I can guarantee you. And it's getting into the middle where it's a little. I'm sure it's breaking slower. down a little bit. Good sweepers, others. It's, Looks like it might carry enough to get... And that was right from start to finish to no, Mark. No, he's short. Short. Just a two. But that, that two was going to be enough. And we have a final here in our feature game. Six to two. Team Ryan mcneil Lambswood over Dave Thomas. That moves him to six and one, Mark? Six and one. I think that'll be good enough to get to the... That'll get him something. Get to the... Uh, at least a tiebreaker at worst place, or he might just be straight through to the one of the playoff positions. Anyway, folks.